Good evening. I'm Dr. Fred Rouse, The Real Money Doctor, and it's currently just a few minutes before 7 o'clock on Friday, April 24th. And I'm here today to do today's daily recap of events that affect the way you get, protect, and enjoy your money, life, and retirement. And today we're going to talk about tested treatments. Um, that's going to be the main point. We'll get to that in a few minutes, though. We always start off with what's happening with the COVID situation because that's the biggest thing that's affecting everyone right now. And right now, there are over 889,000 confirmed cases of COVID in the United States. The death toll reached over $50,000. 50, I'm sorry, over 50,000 people just last night. It's almost 51,000 right now. Okay, uh, that was just in nine weeks. In nine weeks' time, we have lost over 50,000 people to this pandemic. That's getting real, real close to the total number of people that we lost in 10 to 12 years of the Vietnam War. And a lot of people died then. Now, the death rate, the current death rate, from all the cases, all the confirmed cases, is basically sitting at 5.5% right now. So if you get COVID right now, you got a 5.5% chance of actually dying from it. And that seems like a small number. If, you know, there was a 5% chance of rain, well, no big deal. It was to be okay. Up into the point where you're one of the 5%. Right now, the numbers have grown to such a degree that chances are you know someone who knows someone who has or has have had COVID. I just had a couple of students today that I talked to, and they told me they had COVID. And one of them was in New York. Uh, right now, New York cases are 271,000 cases, not quite 272. Okay. Deaths right now are 21,000. And in New York City itself, there's 16.6 thousand deaths. Okay. Uh, the governor of New Jersey is doing what he can, but even though he's doing everything he can, he's still reached over 100,000 cases right now. And he's got over 5,000 deaths. The cases keep growing every day. The deaths are slowing down a little bit in the current hotspots, and that's that's a good thing. Okay, and each one of these things, each one of these numbers, each one of these cases, each one of these deaths, is a personal tragedy to someone. You might not know them specifically, but again, chances are, you know someone who knows someone who's been affected, and. It's a problem, and we can't forget that these are real people. You know, I can sit here all day and tell you about the numbers, and that's great. I mean, I'm a numbers person. That's what I would do. But these are real people, and it has an effect on people's lives. And when one person passes, it affects a number of different people. Again, you throw a stone into a lake, and it ripples out. It has effects. Now, nursing homes are getting hit really, really hard. Our Residents and staff are dying from COVID in nursing homes and long-term care facilities in Illinois, Louisiana, Georgia, New York, New Jersey, Maine, Indiana, Washington State. Almost every place that you've got a nursing home that has any COVID at all, and every one of the 50 states has COVID cases right now, if you're in a nursing home, you're at higher risk. Now, right now, there are over 10,000 confirmed deaths just in nursing homes and long-term care facilities, and that's according to the Wall Street Journal. Okay, again, we don't make this stuff up, we just get it from the news. Okay, healthcare workers as a profession are basically still coming in at 10 to 20% of all the COVID cases. Store clerks, transit workers, bus drivers, police and firefighter people, specific, specifically in the areas with high COVID cases, are sick and dying. And you know, the ones that aren't sick are going in, some are actually calling out. And the numbers of people there to provide the services is decreasing significantly. As of yesterday, over 3,500 U.S. service members have been tested positive for COVID. COVID, and that includes two deaths. Uh, nearly 800 of those cases are from the outbreak that was on board the USS Teddy Roosevelt, the aircraft carrier, where one sailor died and the captain was actually fired for bringing this out to people's attention. He was concerned for his crew. Aircraft carrier 
You've got 5,000 5, people pretty much on a ship. They're not going anywhere, and it's really close quarters. One person gets sick with something this contagious. It's spread, and you can see 800 cases out of that 500 already. Now, there's some slight talk that they might reinstate him. I don't know. We'll see what happens with this. the uh, Secretary of the Navy's got to say about that. The, sec the assistant secretary that fired him uh, and then spent basically $250,000 to go to a trip uh, to talk to the crew and bash the captain some more, he submitted his resignation the following day. So there are some considerations they might reinstate the captain, which would be a, a novel thing. Now, the big thing that's been going on for almost two weeks now is the COVID outbreak at dozens and dozens of meatpacking plants across the nation. And it's much, much more, far extensive than was previously thought. The infection rates in these plants and the areas surrounding these plants is 75% higher than other places in the counties. Now, Tyson was forced to shut down two of his pork processing plants um, in Waterloo, Iowa, after dozens of workers tested positive for COVID. Smithfield's uh, pork plant in South, South Dakota handles about 5% of the pork production and has been suspended indefinitely, all operations. As of yesterday, there were more than 5,000 reported cases and 13 deaths of workers in 48 different processing plants across the United States. Now, we're going to see more of this in the coming weeks because, again, the problem with this is these guys are working shoulder to shoulder. Men and women, shoulder to shoulder, okay, if somebody's got it, they don't, they might not show signs and symptoms for, again, two weeks. There are a lot of people they're in contact with in, in a two-week period. Then, once they get tested, if they, their symptoms come up to that level that they end up getting tested, it could be another two days before they get the test results back. These are not highly paid workers. Okay. They're generally lower paid and their families are living with them. They're in close quarters generally. Okay. A lot of them are immigrants, so they, they keep to their own as much as possible, but they still go out in the rest of the community. And so there are more infections coming in that entire mix. Okay. And you're going to see more of that in the coming weeks. Now, it's starting to affect the food chain. The whole food supply is starting to get affected by this. And it's not a major problem just yet, but according to USA, uh, USDA public data shows that pork and beef production across the industry right now is down 20 to 30 percent. Now, tighter supplies are expected to raise retail prices as their grocery stores start rationing, especially pork chops. Tyson's product portfolio includes Jimmy Dean, Hillshire Farms, and Ballpark. Okay, that's hot dogs and, and really basic sausage kind of things. Okay they're going to start decreasing and the price is going to go up. It hasn't happened just yet. In some parts of the country it has. Now, even as the country is really, really tired of being shut down, families as well as individuals and hundreds of thousands of small businesses are crumbling under the continual financial strain of what's going on. But even with all that, still more than 70% of the country favors continued shutdown. They know it's in their best interest. And that's Republicans and Democrats. State of Florida, heavy Republican area, 72% say stay with the shutdown. Okay. There's a big push to open the country, primarily coming from the president and inside the safety of the Oval Office. And it's compounded by the talking heads on cable TV. Some governors are talking about opening, even though they don't meet the recommendations that the president put out, the White House put out, and the President Coronavirus Task Force put out, which was two weeks of a downward trend in cases before you started to lift measures in phases. Okay. Some governors want to open things. Okay. And they're giving orders to open things. However, the local mayors in their own states are saying, no, 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 it's way too early. We still have cases that are coming up. They're not going down. Now, the interesting thing is, for a while, okay, East Coast and West Coast, it was California, Oregon, Washington State. East Coast, 
New York, New Jersey, New England estates, okay, were the hot spots in New York by far is, is the, the biggest one because they've got the most population in the densest area. Okay. Um, even then, okay, the areas those areas are starting to slow down. They're slowing down in the number of cases they're reporting. They're definitely slowing down the number of deaths they're recurring, which is a good thing. However, right now, in the Midwest and South, they are experiencing the highest growth rate right now for COVID cases. Right now, the Midwest and the South are experiencing the highest growth rates in COVID cases. These are the areas that thought they were relatively safe. A lot of these areas are the areas that are trying to reopen right now as the rates are going up, not going down. Now, the entire key okay, to reopening, to having people have the confidence to go back into stores is based on testing. Now, you can say you want to reopen, and that's fine, but you know, how many people are going to go into that store? How many people are going to go into that restaurant if they don't feel safe? So testing is, without a doubt, the key. But the problem is the testing is simply not there. Now, that brings us to today's main point. Tests and treatments. There are two main types of tests right now things are being tested for. You test for one, and it's a test you hear about all the time, are you infected? Generally a nasal swab, a throat swab, and they put that in a little tube, send it off to the lab, and they come back a day or two later, depending on the time, you know, are you actually infected with COVID or not? The second test is, were you infected with COVID and now do you have the antibodies? That's a blood test. Now currently, less than 1% of the population has been tested. Here we are, mid-April, mid to late April. This started in January. It was denied for most of January, denied for most of February. So here we are, March and April, and less than 1% of the country has been tested. Now, that's just to see if you were infected or not. That's the first test that the governors can't get. Okay. Right now, almost at every briefing, the president tells you about all these tests that are available, all the labs that can do these tests. But the governors on the front lines can't get those tests. The system is broken. Okay. They've known about this for over six or eight weeks right now. And all there is is a strange patchwork of Band-Aid measures to try and fix things. The one thing that would fix it really, really quickly and solve the immediate problem the fastest is for the president to actually invoke and use the Defense Production Act and put one person in charge of the entire supply and distribution for the test and all the component parts of it. But that hasn't happened for some unknown reason. I don't understand it. Nobody else seems to understand it either. Okay, but my guess is we we'll go back to power and money. Those two things control most of the situations, power and money. Now, he hasn't done it. He hasn't put anybody in charge of that. He doesn't want to release that type of control for some reason. Now, the second type of testing, the one that tests for the antibodies to see if you've been infected before and you've cleared almost, well, that's a blood test. And right now, more and more private labs are cranking these tests out left and right, and they're not at all well regulated by the FDA at all. A lot of them just don't work. And so if you get these tests, you can't trust the results. But they charge hefty amounts for these things. So that brings us to treatments. Okay. Actual or potential treatments. Now, I have received more than several emails complaining that all I do is bash the president. Okay. And you know, I try and respond to most every email, unless they're really, really obnoxious. But if somebody's relatively normal, reasonable tone, I'm going to try and respond to that email. And I address that question in the emails the same way I do here on the show. Okay? And it's a really basic type of situation. Okay? I don't need to bash the president. I'm not trying to. I don't have to. 
All I do is report what he actually said in a briefing or an interview. Because you should know what your president says and how he thinks because his words carry weight. His actions carry weight. Now, for weeks, um, a couple of weeks ago, anyway, three, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, without any medical degree or any training whatsoever, he was pushing hydroxychloroquine as a potential treatment for COVID, even though there was no remotely solid medical evidence to back that up. None at all. But he kept pushing it day in, day out. Okay. Someone ended up taking it on their own. They died. Mm -hmm. Come to find out today, because of what the president said, and whatever they were doing in the background, okay, the VA started using this on vets. They didn't get better. A number of vets died from this treatment. His words carry weight. And I don't have to bash him at all. All I do is report what's actually going on. Now, yesterday, during the presidential briefing, okay, he suggested injecting disinfectant into people because it kills the virus almost immediately. That slowed up quite a few people. When a reporter asked them in real time, you know, what's going on with that? The president does what the president does all the time whenever anybody questions his actions or his words. He attacked the reporter. Almost instantly, as soon as he said it, the entire West Wing of staffers knew that there was a problem and text messages were flying back and forth. Those words spread overnight and more than several federal, state, and local agencies, papers around the world, as well as manufacturers, had to stop what they were doing and put out statements saying not to inject or ingest disinfectants. It makes no sense whatsoever. This stuff, Lysol, it's a great disinfectant. Right on the back of it, tells you, hazardous to humans and domestic animals. I don't make this stuff up. He does this all by himself. It's absolutely amazing. So, no, I don't need to bash the president. And if you're offended by be pointing it out, his own words, his own actions, that's okay. You're entitled to your feelings. You really are. I'm not going to complain because you feel that way. I'm not going to complain before you wrote me a nasty email. That's okay. You're entitled to do that. But I'm also entitled to the facts. And that's all I'm telling you is what are facts, actually proven facts. Now, if you have a problem interpreting those facts because of your own personal biases, I can't do anything about that either. Okay. But if you review your own personal biases and find out that, you know, maybe I was drinking the presidential Kool-Aid instead of looking at what's happening in the real world, you might come to the conclusion, yeah, the sun comes up in the east, and it comes up in the morning, and the sun sets in the west, and it goes down at night. When we come to basic facts, and we understand basic facts, then we can have a conversation and move things forward. If we can't agree on basic facts, then we're sort of stuck. Now, I'll be posting this video tomorrow uh, on YouTube. I've got some interesting links there. Every day I post new links, uh, specifically a present up in the top, and... Sometimes it's motivational, sometimes it's entertaining, but there's always something there. Now, I appreciate you being with me tonight. I really do. My only goal is to help you get, protect, and enjoy your money, your life, and your retirement. I'm Dr. Fred Rouse, The Real Money Doctor, and again, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Thank you.